Logan, and welcome back to Elevate Wealth. Let's talk about charitable giving. Over the years as a wealth advisor, I've learned that most people are philanthropic, meaning that they support something they value with their time, talent, or treasure. In fact, it's one of the things I love getting to know about people I serve. What causes do they value and support in their lives? I mentioned time, talent, and treasure because there are so many different ways to give back and support those causes or organizations that are important to us. As a volunteer and a nonprofit board member myself, I recognize how important it is to have volunteers of time and talent. Nonprofit or volunteer organizations truly do not exist without the support of those who willingly give of their time and their individual gifts to support the cause that they care about. When I'm consulting with my clients and discussing their retirement goals, most people really look forward to the time beyond their working career when they can serve their favorite organizations more frequently with their time and talent. But the third item in this trilogy is just as important, treasure. And by that, I typically mean financial donations, one of the most common ways that people make a positive impact in our world by supporting causes and organizations with our dollars. If you're philanthropic in this way, you know that you give out of the goodness of your heart in order to make a positive impact on the issue that you support. However, it's also really nice when we can get a bonus in the form of some kind of tax break when we're supporting these causes and organizations with our after-tax dollars. Prior to 2018, it was not too hard to get a tax benefit for charitable donations in the form of itemized deductions. That was before the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, which doubled the standard deduction and eliminated many of the miscellaneous deductions that we used to itemize. These days, the big three in itemized deductions are state and local taxes, mortgage interest, and charitable gifts. And if those three items don't add up to more than the standard deduction, then you get no extra tax benefit for your giving. So today, I want to share a couple of different ways that you can give charitably and potentially get a better tax benefit for those gifts. First up, the QCD, or Qualified Charitable Distribution. The QCD is absolutely the only way I know of that you can take funds out of a traditional IRA with no income taxes. But the caveat is you have to give those funds directly to a qualified charitable organization. The QCD is available for anyone who has a traditional IRA and is age 70 and a half or older, and each individual is limited to a combined $100,000 in QCDs each year. This is a great strategy for individuals who are taking income from their IRAs, but spending some of it on charitable gifts. What happens, as an example, is if you take $500 out of your IRA to give it to charity, you would owe ordinary federal income tax and perhaps some state tax on that distribution. So you would actually be left with less than $500 after tax to give to the charity. After making the gift, if you don't have enough combined state and local taxes, mortgage interest, and charitable gifts to exceed the standard deduction, then you don't get to itemize your deductions, and therefore you get no tax benefit for your charitable gift. On the other hand, if you give $500 to the charity directly from your IRA, then the charity gets $500 and you don't have to report that $500 as income on your tax return, meaning you gave the full $500 to the charity and lowered your own taxable income by the $500 you would have otherwise withdrawn from your IRA. If you're age 70 and a half or over and have a traditional IRA, the QCD is a fantastic strategy for tax efficient charitable giving. But what if you're not 70 and a half yet or you don't have a traditional IRA? Then you should potentially consider starting what's called a donor advised fund. The best way I can describe a donor advised fund is as a holding account for current and future charitable gifts. The deposit that you make into the donor advised fund is the actual charitable contribution itself, meaning that the amount you would report on your tax return as your charitable gift is the donation you made to the donor advised fund. However, after that, you get to decide when those funds get dispersed in the form of grants to the charities that you support, whether that be tomorrow or next year or 20 years from now. You can even leave this type of account to your children and grandchildren and for generations to come to support the causes that they're passionate about. The tax benefit comes in by making a significant contribution to the donor advised fund in a single year so that you can itemize your deductions. In the years that follow, you simply use those funds to grant out to the organizations, but there's no tax deduction, and typically you would take the standard deduction on your tax return in those grant out years. 
Depending on your level of giving, you may make a contribution to your donor advised fund every three or four years and then itemize in the years that you make the contribution while taking the standard deduction in the years that follow. Donor advised funds are a fantastic way to give when you have enough assets to essentially pre-fund two or three or four years of charitable giving. And they're a great strategy when you've had a year with a big income event, like a business property or a sale. Lastly, if you hold investments like stocks or bonds that have grown in a regular investment or brokerage account, you can directly transfer those assets to a charity and essentially give away the gain tax-free. So for example, let's say you wanna make a gift of $1,000 to a charity you support. You own 100 shares of XYZ company that you purchased for $5 each, but the shares are now worth $10 each. That means you paid $500, but the shares are now worth $1,000. And if you sold the stock, you would probably have a taxable capital gain of $500. So after selling the shares and paying the tax on the $500 gain, you would have less than $1,000 available to give to the charity after tax. And more than likely, you also cannot itemize that deduction and get a tax benefit. Instead of selling the shares, what if you directly transfer the shares to the charity? This is called giving appreciated securities. And what happens is when you transfer the shares to the charity, you don't have to realize the capital gain yourself. You gave the gain away to the charity. And since the qualified charities have special tax treatment, when they sell the shares, they won't be on the hook for capital gains taxes either. So you would have given the charity the full thousand dollar donation and neither of you would owe a capital gains tax. Bonus pro tip here is you can also fund a donor advised fund with appreciated securities and get the double tax benefit of not realizing the capital gains while getting to take the full value of the donation as an itemized deduction. Sound complex? It can be. But that's why we're here. At Elevate, we really enjoy showing our clients and friends how they can give from their hearts and maximize their gifts in the most tax efficient way for them. And side note, it also changes over time, sometimes from year to year. Until next time, thank you so much for all that you do to support your communities with your time, talent, and treasure. If you give charitably, but you're unsure whether you're receiving the tax benefits from doing so, we can help. Visit elevate-wealth.com and click the Let's Talk button.